Let's talk about adding maps to web pages using JavaScript and Cardo. So if you've used Cardo for a bit and you're used to using HTML, um, there's a pretty good chance that you've embedded a Cardo map using an iframe. So through the share area, if you go to publish, you've probably copied this embed code into an HTML document to embed the map. I have it open here. Uh, so you might have a simple web page where that iframe code is copied here. And when you load such a page, it looks like this. So it has the, um, has the, the blue bar for Cardo, um, and it has some other styling that is built into Cardo, and that is fine for most situations. It really depends on what you need it for, but if you need more control over your Cardo map when it is on your own web page, you might want to use JavaScript. So how do you use JavaScript to add a map to your web page, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to take a few steps. So the first step is going to be to add cardo.js to your web page. And if the way you get to the page I was just on is you go to the Cardo website and under resources, documentation, there's a cardo.js section and you want to click on that, and I'm going to go to getting started. Okay, so you need to include both the CSS for the library, which is up here, and the JavaScript for the library, which is here. Um, and those need to be on your page. I'm going to put both of them in my head element, and I have an example that we can look at for that. So in the head element, I have copied and pasted both the CSS and the JavaScript. I'm going to use the HTTPS version of both of these, and you can find that by going down the HTTPS support. And then I just copied and pasted both of those into my document like this. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to create a place for the map to go. So you need to create a div element. And traditionally, we give that element an ID of map. Unless you have multiple maps on your page, in which case you'll need different IDs for those maps. Um, but if you just have one map on your page, call it map. That's what most people end up doing. So that's step two. You create a place for that map to live. Step three, you want to make sure that you style that element. So in my case, I'm making a, a page where the map takes up as much room as it possibly can. So I'm going to just give it a height and width of 100% each. You might, uh, you might have different requirements for your web page. So uh, I just want to make sure you need uh, to have dimensions to that div. That div has to have dimensions, otherwise your map is not going to show up. And that's step three. So to recap, step one, we copied and pasted the, um, the CSS and JavaScript into our web page. Step two was we created an element. Step three, we styled that element. And now step four is where we actually write some code. And step four, um, it looks like a lot right here, but that's because I have a bunch of comments here. If I remove the comments temporarily, you'll see that it's actually just a couple of lines of code. And um, this is going to go in a script element in your body, usually at the end of the body. At the very end of the body, put a script element, 
and in that script element you can write JavaScript. And to start with, I would recommend just copying this verbatim and starting from there. So it's pretty, pretty uncommon to write this from scratch. You'll usually copy and paste it from somewhere else. Okay. So, so what this says is when the document is ready, create a visualization, create a map. So there's a lot going on here, actually. This document.ready depends on jQuery. And jQuery is a, another library. Um, you can get it at jQuery.com. Yes, jQuery.com. And I would recommend going to the download section and scroll down until you find using it with a CDN. I'll make that a little bigger. And um, use one of the CDNs. Um, so for example, this 2.x one, this will be fine. So you need you need some version of jQuery for that for this to work, this dollar sign document dot ready. And what that means is wait until the whole page is loaded before you start making the map. Um, okay. So that's that's what this line and this line is. And inside there is the code that runs once the document is ready. And the code that we run here is cardo.db.createViz. CreateViz is a function that asks cardo.db to add a map to your page. The next text, this string here, map, is the ID of the element you want your map to show up in. So if, my, if I had multiple maps and this was map2, for example, I would want to update that here. These have to match. And if you had multiple divs with multiple maps in them, you might have multiple create viz, like this. Okay? I'm going to undo all of that and keep it simple for now. But just, just make sure that these IDs line up. Finally, you need a URL for that ends in viz.json. Viz.json. Let's open this up and see what this is. All right. So you, let's zoom in a little bit. So this is, it looks like code, and that's because it basically is code. And what this is, is a description of my map. It's on Cardo. Cardo makes this for you, and it describes your map in such a way that it can recreate it in code. So you can see everything from my pop-ups to my legends, um, to the way that the overlays are created. All of these, all of this information is encoded on this in this file, so that it can then create recreate the map on your page. Okay, so you need to be able to get this viz.json URL, which looks like this. If you have a new school account, it's going to be very similar to this. So thenewschool.carter.com this Brelsfo again, that, that is my username, so you'll want to replace that with your username. And the other thing you want to change is everything between viz and viz.json needs to be replaced with your map ID. What is your map ID? Your map ID is everything at the 
end of the URL when you're looking at the map in Cardo. So I have my map open here. You can see the URL is the new school at Carter.com slash Belsvogan slash builder slash and then a bunch of numbers and letters. That's a unique identifier for your map. So you need to copy that into this area. And again, you need to put your username right here. And hopefully I did not break that when I copied and pasted. So I'm going to copy this again then look at it in the browser again. Yes, it worked. So this should work. Um, so I'm my file right now is embed.html. Let's load that page here. And you can see that it's not quite the same as when using an iframe using an embed, right? Here are the differences. You don't have this little bar anymore. Um, and that's kind of the big difference right now is you don't have that bar. But from here you can customize more of the um, of the way your map shows up. Okay, so for for right now, maybe I want the zoom level to be different when you load the page. And you can do that by adding some options to create viz. Those options are defined in the documentation. So if you go to API methods on the Cardo.js page, you see that it talks about cardodb.createViz. That is this function that we're using here. And if you scroll down, you should see options. And you should see a bunch of different options that you can turn on and off. For example, we can set the initial zoom. So to add options, they go after this URL. You'll want to add a comma and then in curly braces go your options. For example, zoom. Uh, let's make it zoom in really far, 16. And when I refresh the page, you should see that it zooms differently next time or it doesn't work. I wonder why it didn't work. So let's see, this should be a comma. Oh, it was not a comma for some reason. Let's try that again. Okay, the zoom looks the same. Maybe it was already zoom, zoom 16. Let's try zooming out a little bit. You can see that it's the same center, but the zoom is 14 instead of 16. And maybe we want it to be zoomed in a little bit more. Okay, so maybe that's the zoom level that we really want for this map. So the nice thing about doing it in JavaScript is you can set it in the JavaScript once, and then no matter how the map changes down the road, you know that the zoom level is going to be the same later on. Um, and the same thing for the center latitude and center longitude, if you wanted to set those you would do so here. So you would add a comma after the zoom, and you would say center lat. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the latitude and longitude is around the area of my map. Let's say negative 20, and then comma, center lon. Um, let's try 50. I don't know where that's going to be. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and see where that takes me. And when I refresh my embed page, it should be somewhere completely different. OK. I went way too far, as you can see. Both too far, yes, too far south and west, east rather. Um, but you get the idea. If, if you were mapping in a particular area, you would probably have a specific center latitude and longitude that you would want to set. Okay, uh, So I'm going to get rid of those, all of the options, because I don't want any of those options. 
I'm trying to do the simplest thing I can do. The simplest thing I can do is create viz with the map ID and the viz.json URL. Okay? So it's this is the code that's required and um, and that's one straightforward way to add a map to your web page using JavaScript. One nice benefit of having it on your page using JavaScript is that your page can then modify that map. How might I want to modify it? I might want to filter the data based on some user interactions. So let me close these two tabs that I don't need anymore so we can focus on this one. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, so, so I added a button. I added two buttons to my map here. You can see um, if you click on them, it changes what's visible on the map. So this map has a layer of water and sanitation features. When I click public water, it only shows those that were marked as public water features. And when I click reset, you should see all of them again. See, public water, reset. And this is really, this is a simple uh, change. And it can get a lot more complicated, but let's start here. Adding two buttons to your page that um, that filter the data. So let's open up that file. That file looks like this. And you'll see that the head is very similar. I'm going to load Java, jQuery. I'm going to load CardoDB, both the CSS and the JavaScript. And I style the map element. And I still have a map element. All of those things stay exactly the same as when we created a map with JavaScript before. What we're going to add is a div that holds all of the buttons. And in this case, the buttons are public water and reset. I gave both of these a class that makes it clear to me which one was clicked. So you want each one to have a unique class. In this case, I have one that's public water and one that's reset. And that adds these buttons to the page. Now if I scroll down, again, lots of comments. I'll get rid of these temporarily for, for the purpose of this, uh, for this map. Or maybe I'll, yeah. I'll get rid of that one. Okay, so in the JavaScript, we still have a document.ready and a cardodb.createViz. All of that stays exactly the same. What we change is a little nuanced, and I'm going to go through this methodically from the top. So before the document.ready, on the line before it, I'm creating a variable. So I'm saying var lot sand layer. This variable is going to hold on to the layer that is the data layer on my map. If you look back at Cardo, I'm creating a layer, a variable that will hold on to this, this thing just the overlay data, okay? Just this data, and that's that's Watson layer. Now, when you say var Watson layer, it's empty initially, right? You didn't put anything in it yet. We need to put something in it. And what we're going to put in it is the layer from Cardo. And we do that here. After create viz, right after the parentheses, 
notice that there's no semicolon there. I say dot done. What this means is when create viz is done, run some code. Similar to document.ready, it says when the page is ready, run this code down here. Similarly, this dot done after create viz says run this code. So it says, hey Cardo, once this map is loaded, let me know. I want to do something with it. And the thing I want to do is find the Watt sand layer. This part is a little tricky. We're saying Watt sand layer, you're going to be equal to layers one dot get sublayer zero. The reason this is tricky is there's a lot going on in a Cardo map. If you look at a Cardo map, there's, there are going to be base layers, there are going to be your overlay layers. Layer zero for a Cardo map is the base map right here. So we don't want the base map in this case. So we say we want layers one. Layers one is all of your overlay data. You might have eight different layers in your overlay data. So you need to dig into that overlay data and get the first one of those. So I'm saying get sublayer zero. A lot of times in programming, the first of something is zero and it goes up from there. Um, so that's why we say get sublayer zero. If I had another layer on top of Watson, I would get it with get sublayer one. But you're always going to have layers one dot get sublayer and then some the, some number here. Okay, so we do all of this in order to get something in Watson layer, something that we can refer to later. And we're going to use Watson layer to change what's visible on that layer. And we do that here. So you can see that we refer to Watson layer a couple of times later on in the code. And what we do is we say Watson layer dot set SQL. You should remember from previous work with Cardo that you can set the SQL on a layer and that will change what is visible on that layer. So in this case we're selecting all of the columns from our table called Watson where Watson is equal to water public. So we're filtering down the rows to just where this column is equal to this value. And then when we reset the layer, we just say select star from Watson. Okay. And both of these are inside what we call click handlers. A click handler tells jQuery to listen for when a button is clicked. In this case, it selects the public water button. This says select the public water button. Let me know when it's clicked. When it is clicked, run this function here. Same thing for the reset button. Select the reset button. When it's clicked, run this code. Why are we using a period here in the selector? We're using that because it's a class. So if you look up here, the class of the button is public water. So we say select the public water button. When it's clicked, run this code. All this code between these two parentheses that are highlighted right now. And let's see how that works. 
I'll refresh the page to make sure we're still using the same code. Yes. When I click public water, you see that fewer things show up. When I click reset, all of the things should show up. What if I wanted another button? Let's try adding another button. Go first in the HTML. You want to add another button. I'm just going to copy and paste one of the buttons. And I'm going to change the class. There's a, there's some of the rows are urban agriculture. So I'm going to add urban agriculture. And the text that I want on the button would just be urban agriculture. I'm going to save my page and refresh it just to make sure that the button is actually there. It is there. Great. Um, what happens if I click on it? Nothing. These buttons still work but nothing happens when I click this. And that's because I haven't added any JavaScript to it yet. Right? We just added HTML. For the JavaScript, we're going to want to copy and paste the public water one. Right? So you want to make sure that you select, look at um, how this is structured and see that all three lines need to be copied and pasted. Since these parentheses here are at the same indentation level, you know that they're all related. So we need to keep them all together. And the class of the new button is urban-agriculture. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy and paste as much as you can. And the column, I actually forget how exactly the column works. So I'm going to go back to my data, I'm going to open up the layer, and look at the columns, and look at the Watt Sand column. Let's see. You see that there are a bunch of water public, recycling, toilet public. Uh, there aren't many of them. Here's one, urban underscore agriculture. It's important that this is exactly the same. So I'm going to copy and paste as much as I can. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to refresh my page and cross my fingers. Yes, it worked. Great. So you can see, this is where the urban agriculture is. If I click public water, that should still work. And reset still works. What if I had made a typo here? What if I kept this a hyphen? Let's save and refresh. What happens when I run this? None of the columns match that value. None of the rows match that value. So nothing shows up. What if I did something weird here? What if I referred to the wrong table? What if I wrote some SQL that maybe there was a typo in the name, or maybe I just made up some weird table name that doesn't exist? What happens then? One indication that there's an issue is sometimes the spinner just won't go away. You see that it thinks it's loading something, but it's not. It's just spinning. So that's one indication that something's going wrong. As you saw before, when there are no matches, then you just get a blank map. But when you do something wrong, you'll get the spinner nothing changed. How do you debug this? Well, I would recommend anytime you are working on something like this that you have the developer tools open. And I'm going to refresh the page. 
And let's see. So we don't get any errors here in the developer tools, which is a little frustrating. So what can you possibly do? What I would recommend doing is use the SQL that is running in Cardo and see what happens, right? So you want to select everything between the quotation marks. This is the SQL that will run. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to Cardo and I'm going to open up just the data set that I'm working with. Go to the SQL and paste in exactly what will run. You want to make sure it's exactly the same, otherwise you're debugging something that you're not actually using, right? So you want to make sure it's exactly the same and apply it. Okay, error in SQL query. Watson does not exist, does not exist. That makes sense. So from here I can change it and see that yes, that worked, so I would copy that and paste that into my code. Okay. The other thing you might run into is you might have a code error. And when you have a code error outside of SQL, that is going to show up in the developer tools. For example, what if I accidentally put something like create map? Oh no. So let's close the developer tools for a second. If you load your page and the map just does not show up, chances are pretty good that there's a JavaScript error somewhere in your code. And that is why I would recommend just having the developer tools open all the time when you're developing these pages. Because you're going to create errors, we all do, it's totally common and normal, um, but you need to be able to find those errors and hopefully not get totally frustrated while doing that. Errors will be easy to see because they're going to show up in red in the console. You'll also see this little X up here when there's an error. And you'll see um, the text of these errors is not always the most readable uncaught type error, but if you read it long enough, it says cardodb.createMap is not a function. It does not exist. And if you see here, it says button.html colon 43. That means it happened in the file called button.html at line 43. And if I click on this, it's going to open that in developer tools, right? So you can actually look at exactly where the error was. It kind of looks like spell check in, in a word processor. So it's saying this thing does not exist. So I can change this back to create viz, save it, refresh. There should be no errors. Great, it worked fine. And my filters work fine. Okay, so that is um, that's a quick look at how you can add maps to your pages with JavaScript and use JavaScript to filter things on your